Hey, D Dijkstra here, another great video for math. Uh, today we're talking about long division of polynomials. All right, so let's see. We have um, a divisor, right? Just so we can all go back to some of these terms we want to make sure we're clear on. A divisor is something that's being divided into the dividend, right? And what we get is the quotient, all right? So uh, we can think of these as factors. If we had uh, 12 as the dividend, right, and 3 was our divisor, 3 divided into 12 would give us a quotient of 4, right? So as an example. Now, if uh, something, if this divides with no remainder, then we can say that the divisor and the quotient are factors of the dividend. All right, so don't make it rocket science. It's just simply, what are you dividing into the divisor, right? I'm dividing by the divisor into the dividend, and what I get out is the quotient. Okay, so let's look at some steps on how we do long division of polynomials, all right? So... It's very similar to what we've done in the past when you have, say, 900 something and you're going to divide it by 2 or 3. You're going to look at the first term and you're going to you know, figure out, well, what, what can 2 go into 900? 9, yeah, it goes in 4 times, that's 8. Then you subtract and you do that stuff, right? The regular long division. Same way with polynomials. Let's look at some basic steps. One, arrange the terms of the dividend and divisor in descending order. Okay, so now that's according to their power, their exponential powers, right? We're not necessarily too concerned with what the coefficients are, but we want to know what those powers are. So, uh, and we can descend them from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and so forth. Not ascending x up to x to the fifth. We don't want that way. We want descending order. And we remember to fill in the missing terms with a 0x. We have to make sure that's there because otherwise we'll get off track. These are very column-oriented uh, uh, strategies. All right. Secondly, after I've arranged it, I ask myself, what do I need to multiply the first term in my divisor, right, my divisor, to get the first term in my dividend? What do I need? What can I multiply this x or something by to create that x? And we'll look at those, that situation. Step three, we multiply every term in the divisor by the term in the quotient. So once I get this quotient, what am I doing? How, what do I need to multiply this by to get that? Well, this value here. Then I multiply this quotient into the, the divisor, and then I will list it below my uh, dividend. Okay. Then we subtract the product. We go through and we subtract just like we normally would when we're dealing with a high level, um, a high, high, a high number uh, dividend, and we have a small divisor. Then we bring down the next term, and then the, the steps repeat. All right, so let's see. What does this look like? Let's look at an example. So I'm going to be switching back and forth here a little bit. So here we go. We have x minus 3, uh, let's see, yeah. we have x minus 3 being divided into x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. So if you recall from the steps, one of the first things I want to do is what is something x that will get me an x cubed? I want to create an x cubed. So what can I multiply x by? to make an x cubed. And if you're saying x squared, that's absolutely correct. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go x squared, right? So that's x squared. Now, once I do that, x squared times, now I'm going to multiply it by all the parts in the uh, divisor, right? So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared minus 3 is minus 3x squared. I draw a line. Now here's where the important part comes. I'm going to negate or subtract. So when I subtract 
put that in parentheses, and I subtract it. That's x cubed minus x cubed, which creates a 0. 0, which is what I want. And then 2x squared minus a minus. Well, this sign will change that to a plus. So now I have negative 2x squared plus 3x squared gives me an x squared. Okay, gives me an x squared. Now, I do the next step. Bring down that five, negative 5x. Five so now I've got negative 5x there. Okay, so that's plus. So that, this 0 will just go away, obviously. And so now we're dividing into x squared minus 5x. So I look and go, all right, well, what do I need to multiply x by in order to create an x squared? Well, I got to multiply it by an x. So plus x. Now you notice how I'm lining these up in these columns, right? I'm trying to keep this all very neat and orderly so that when I go back and review, I know that there was an x squared uh, plus an x. I don't want to list it over here under the, uh, near the x cubed term because that's not what we're doing. We're doing an x uh, squared. Okay, so now we multiply x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Draw my line. And what do we do next? You got it. We got to negate. So I subtract. This will be x squared minus an x squared, which gives me a 0 again, which is what I want. And then negative 5 minus a minus. Well, that's going to turn this into a plus. So negative 5x plus 3x will be negative 2x. And again, what do I do? Bring down the next number. And we get plus 6. OK. Now right here is where a lot of uh, people make mistakes, right? And what they want to do is they go, oh, I can cancel this out with a positive 2x, right? And then it'll go to 0. And if you do that, then when you go to negate the whole thing later, then you're going to end up with a negative 4x. And we don't want that. So pay attention to this part, OK? because this is important. I need to make a negative 2x. Remember that. That's always what we got to do. we got to create a negative 2x. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 2x. Negative, not a negative 2x, a negative 2, excuse me, negative 2. Now, when I do that, that's going to be negative 2 times x. That gives me a negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. And so look, I've got everything there. And now I'll come through and I will make my subtraction. That changes that to a plus and that to a minus. And that goes away and that goes away. And so there you go. And you got a nice little happy face at the end because they're all zeros. Yay! All right. Well, that has been dividing long polynomials. But remember that step. Don't try and use this as a means to cancel things out, okay? Let the subtractive piece do that for you, all right? Anyway, that has been long division of polynomials. D-Dystra, thanks again. Peace. Have a great one.